A new day dawned on January 12, 2010, and Haitians prepared to carry on as if it were just another day. Then it happened. It was close to 5 o'clock in the evening when the devastating 7.0 magnitude earthquake rocked the capital of Port-au-Prince, killing hundreds of thousands and displacing over a million people. By mid-January, over 50 aftershocks had taken place, adding to the fear and trauma that existed within the nation. I went to Haiti and saw some of the most disturbing images of my life. Images that make me miserable and bring the same sadness to my heart that I experienced one year ago. The gates of a small hospital represented an oasis for injured people seeking relief, and when they closed, they provided relief for the weary hearts of people who could no longer bear the sights and smells of mourning, cruelty, and death. Hunger and despair remained outside of these gates, and people were searching for food and drink to satisfy the insatiable urges of hunger and thirst. They wore masks to lessen the stench of death. A building next to the hospital had collapsed, and by the time we left, the smell of death became stronger. Uncertain at first, we knew then that there were bodies trapped underneath all of that rubble. The streets were filled with homeless and broken families. She sat there quietly, and looking at her, I didn't think she had much wrong with her, if anything at all. Then the sign went around her neck. It read internal bleeding. She waited, patiently, not a sound. Eventually, as quietly as she came, she left. This particular girl, no older than 13, cried while her father looked on helplessly. The bandage around her ankle hid a gaping hole, protruding flesh and bone tinged in green. She was lucky she didn't have to lose a limb, as amputations were necessary due to the lack of treatment and follow-up care. Patients were wheeled in and out of surgery, going in with all their limbs and coming out without one. Amputations went on all day. At one point, I stood on the spot and just stared. Beads of sweat poured down these doctors' faces as they hurried around, distributing medicine and changing days-old bandages. I stared then, and I reflect now. I close my eyes, and behind the darkness, I see the nightmare that was, and the nightmare that lives on.